Rocha on, um, on the Randolph um, School Board and I'm chair of this board. Paul Kendall, not interested. <laughs> He's a visitor, a guest. Isn't that nice? Uh, I'm Kate Hughes. I work for CPB and do a lot of the dual enrollment partnerships. And I'm Amanda Mills Brown. I'm pretty sure we've met. Yeah. Um, I'm a Payne Mountain School District, no longer Mommy. Williamstown School District, so we are one. So you represent? Mommy. I represent both towns. Jason Kingold, Randolph Technical Career Center Director. Year four. <laughs> keep coming back. What's that? You keep coming back? I do. Yes, you keep letting me come back. As our guest, Paul, did you, is there anything you want to add or say? That's here, though. Word. All right. So Jason is um, has presented this artist in your profile in a lot of depth. What can you add? To um, what can I add? So, what are we? What, what are important numbers here? Um, I think important numbers are our numbers are up this year. You know, if we look, uh, my first year we we're at 164, and we had hit a little downward below. Um, we put a lot into recruitment, and we're at 152 for this year. Which is really nice. I think that's a nice number for us. I think if we go past the 165, we run into some facility kind of stretch issues where there's only one toilet, um, not enough room in the cafeteria, parking, you know. So I think this number is a nice number for us. Um, we have some, you know, someone asked us what our percentages of students are. Um, and right now we have 52% of Randolph juniors and seniors. Uh, we have 43% of Williamstown juniors. This would be compared to their total enrollment of juniors at their own school. Oh, wow. Okay? So there are 56 juniors at Williamstown High School. We have 24. 13% right. uh, Williamstown seniors. The White River School, which is now South Royalton and Whitcomb Bethel. Uh, we have 30% of their juniors and 23% of their seniors. And Northfield, we have 28% of their juniors and 25% of their seniors. Um, so and numbers can be deceiving, you know, when there's only 32 seniors and there's eight here or something. It, it kind of messes things up. Um, what else? The technical skill attainment, um, that will change for next year. It's no longer right now for this year a requirement by the Agency of Education. So those end of year exams are no longer required. So it's internally we're discussing what, how do we know? What do we know? What, how do we want to replace that? We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Actually, we'll come back to that with our screen. Um, we're really proud of our IRC attainment. Um, as a center, we attained 95%, I think, of our students. Or nine, everyone got an IRC, so you'd think it'd be 100%, but it's 95% recognized by the Agency of Education. That's our highest attainment in the past three years. So we're really proud of that. And that's something that, as a data measurement, we keep striving for. Um, and actually, also, the Department of Labor will be taking, or the State Workforce Development Board, is taking over the IRC part portion of what IRCs are needed out in the industry. So that may change in the next year or two as well, just about what, what is available. So it's sort of changing the benchmarks? Is that going to change It won't change the best or? marks, I don't think. It may change the curriculum a little bit because an industry sector might say, we're noticing that students aren't coming out with X. We'd like them to have that. Um, we're not quite there yet, and neither are they, as far as what they're asking for. But as far as reporting, we're still required to report to the Agency of Education that number. Um, so are those self-administrated? Say that again? Who administrates those? IRCs? Yeah. It depends what they are. Um, so, like, we'll contract out on these dates mommy, for CPR and mommy, first aid, and we'll have someone mommy, from the Red Cross mommy, come in and do CPR mommy, first aid. When we do game of logging, we contract that out. There are very few. We'll do our own tractor safety. Matt became, that, that teacher became certified. Mm -hmm. There are very few that we do on ourselves. Those are usually outside entities. And we use Perkins Funds money to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Last year, we spent close to $30,000 on that. Oh, no. So it's, it's worth it. Um, our dual enrollment numbers keep growing, mm -hmm. um, which we're really yeah. happy about. Yeah. Um, and our fast forward ticket. One thing we came into a bump with this year is um, last year VTC would accept a dual enrollment voucher 
for the short courses they run. So like meat cutting, cheese making, um, forestry, and the agency of education said they can't do that anymore because they're not credit bearing courses. And that's a policy issue. So the legislature are the only people that could fix that policy. Um, but I'm gonna try and push some people in the AOE to address that, but that'll take a long time. So in the meantime, VTC gave us a rate of $200 for a short course per student, and we'll find some line items to help pay for that. So that the students, we have students now, we have four who are signed up to take the artificial insemination course at VTC coming up in October. So rather than having the students miss it completely, we just found a little bit of way around it. Um, I think it's a little bit of discriminatory, so, but they won't believe me yet. Um, student organizations, career technical student organizations, the number of students is growing. Um, this year we're going to have a FBLA chapter out of the education program. Um, and we had winners. Carlos is the digital film teacher. He had two state winners last year go to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. I know. Um, yeah, I know, me too. Um, our discipline data in there, that's, this, is our, this was our second year that we started tracking discipline counts. Um, and it's just a way for us to also address what we think is happening and student perception and how may we react to such incidents. What else? We'll do our six month graduate would be next month when we find out what students who have just graduated, are they still enrolled or are they working? Um, we report that to the AOE. I think in October we report that to them. Um, what else? Then just some quick updates that, that weren't in the report that I'd like to show you. Um, so we're at 152 students. Jen Joles, our guidance counselor, just put out the financial aid packet for seniors, um, which is a link also on our website. So as it gets updated, it goes live. Um, we'll email that out to all parents. Um, and students, um, so it's a great wealth of information as the FAFSA opens up October 1st. Yay, Leo, FAFSA. Um, and then um, I'm working through School Messenger. Do you get those, Laura? Can you get those? Do you get emails from me? I do. You get those on I Saturday? Do. Okay. Amanda? Okay. I don't either. You, you don't. Okay, so I'm in the process of uh, the school district purchase this school messenger, okay? And what I'm trying to do is figure ways to enter your pers your email address that we have on file for you, and then every Saturday or Sunday, I send a weekly update to families. Um, and so we have about 112 that have signed up. They all, it's by request. So when we they do an application, we get their email. If they don't give us their email, they won't get it, but there's you know an unsubscribed and subscribed way. And then I just try and send parents information about what's happening in the center weekly and reminders and dates. Um, but I'll add the link to the financial aid packet. I add the link to our CSA. Those kinds of things. Well. So I'll, I'll put you more on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to figure out a way to also add a picture, which will make it more exciting. Um, <laughs> But I haven't figured that out. It's good. It's not intuitive. It's it's a it's not intuitive, and I think I'm somewhat tech savvy, but it's not. There's no like you know add a picture here icon. Um, this year we're continuing um, our food for thought, and so that's every last Friday of a month, every student goes home with a bag of food, and that's all through fundraising. Um, this year our business management class has taken that project over. Um, staff are still kind of advising, but the business management class, the goal would be they're going to figure out the cost, the marketing plan, the begging for money fundraising plan, um, and then the building trade students, they make those boxes so we can collect the food and put the bags of food in each program. We're hoping our graphic arts or film program will come on board and help us with the marketing campaign, so we're trying to include this and make this as a community project as best as we can. So we're starting again, and next Friday will be the last Friday of September. We didn't do it in August. Um, and then another update, and this is why I have a screen. We're redoing our tech project this year as a senior. Um, actually, it's not as a senior requirement anymore. We're requiring all students to do this. And it's 
the college and career portfolio. Um, I won't go through the whole package. I think it's best if you just read it. But what I really wanted to show you was this. This is a platform we're using. It's called Protean, um, P-R-O-T-E-A-N. It's through the UVM Terrence Institute. It's a local Vermont company. Um, and we've been working with Ali and Gary for about a year now um, to make this happen. So it's free. Um, so every student will have access. Williamstown and Northfield are going to use it as part of their students' PLP process, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. Familiar. Yeah, which is nice because then as those students come to us, if they do, it, it'll be a continuation for them. And for us, what we're using it for, this is uh, Ali's daughter's site, and because we haven't, our students haven't built their site yet. But if you're in, if you're familiar with LinkedIn or Facebook, it's a very intuitive yeah. kind of platform. And what we're doing is students will have, uh, okay, students might have projects, but we're calling them, uh, it's goals actually, sorry, still learning the system. Students will have all their competencies from their program as their goals. And so this way, as they go out on co-op, or if the student was here tonight instead of Carlos filming this, they'd be able to tag their competency to their evidence. Mm -hmm. And, and that's much better than anything else they can do. How do you know? How do I know if I go sign up with Leo, which I have done, but and he's my financial advisor, how do I know he's doing what he does? And this way he can picture that evidence and put it in this digital portfolio. With that, we're hoping by the end, students are seeing their year of a roadmap of how they got to the end outcome, but also most important, what are they doing with that outcome at the end? So that's part of the goal work in this project. Are they going to college? Are they going to a training school? Or do they have a job? And, and not the job that they can get right now without us, their career path job. So included in this are the transferable skills that the state requires. Um, communication, teamwork, leadership. They have to show evidence of all these pieces. And they're just going to build their own portfolio with this platform. All 152 students are going to be overseen by Jason Finley, our workplace coordinator. But our English teacher, myself, and Mr. Abadi, our student service coordinator, we're all going to have access. And Jen Joel is our guidance counselor, so we can monitor. So this is basically a digital portfolio. Yes. Maybe I got something wrong, but sure. is this I instead of their project? It becomes their project. It becomes their project. Becomes, now, the other piece that's a little different is, you know, in the past, we st we're still going to do the open house, right, where students have to present. So they're going to present their project, their portfolio, but they also have to pick a minor, what we're calling, you know, so, in, you know, when you were in college, you picked a minor, uh, minor was sociology, right? And so now, here, they're going to pick a minor related to their program. If we use ag as an example, maybe the student's really interested in blacksmithing. So they're gonna do a project from their program about blacksmithing, as well as Yay, this digital portfolio. So that will be, that will be something the visible. House, something visible, okay. right. Besides what you look on a Chromebook and try and navigate your way through. So we're excited about it. We had um, Protean come in and train our staff on August 31st and show us the platform. They came in on yesterday. Was that yesterday already? They came in yesterday and showed the students the platform. And then starting next week, we're going to go through the whole project with the students, program by program, and explain the platform to them. And then by October 1st, they should be able to log on and start building their portfolio. So every kid in a program would have the same goals listed? They will have their same three goals of academic, personal, and career. And then moving down will be their program competencies. So auto might have brakes, engines, and then detailed out. Health careers, blood pressure, et cetera, et cetera. Which will help us answer the previous question of how do we know a student's competent in their program? Before, they took this end of year exam, and that was one academic way for a student to say, yeah, I'm a completer. Now we're actually going the other way and saying, oh, I have to show evidence of all my completion. And then tag it to that. 
Right. No, it's a great life skill, it sounds like, too, you know, to set goals and see yourself, you know, being able to sort of account for the way you're reaching them. Absolutely. And if I was a little more proficient, I could show you better examples. Um, there's going to be some student reflection that they, you know, so I went, we're acquiring three job interviews, or not job interviews, but um, career interviews. So if a student wanted to go into Leo's field, they may have to contact him to set up an interview. Rather than before it was about mentorship, now we're asking students, how'd you get where you are? What do I have to do to get to where you are today? Um, because the mentor piece was a huge uh, breakdown for us and students obtaining mentors in the background checks. So we're, we're getting rid of that. That, that was a distraction. Um, but I also feel like if I'm in business management and I want to get to where Leo is, it's better that I meet Leo, not necessarily as a network piece, but how do I understand how do I get there? And what are the processes you went through? And then how do I do that myself? And that may be part of the goal system, mm -hmm. which to me is all about the outcome after high school. And so then how, so a student is, is engaging in, in that, mm -hmm. how does that student then um, sort of report or, or reflect on that? Yep. Or, or even record you know, sure. what, what actually happened? Yep, so either with their phone or we have iPads they can check out, they can record and or videotape our interview, mm -hmm. right? We'll train them what it means to, to be an interview or how to interview, what questions should I ask Leo if I want to get to this spot? Mm -hmm. Right now, be in, in here or in our English class, and they can upload that audio or video as evidence to this platform. The documentation, and then they'll write a little self-reflection about, hey, that one, you know, my first interview, I was really nervous, or this is what I learned, or wow, I really don't want to do that at all. Jason, just a question on that. And that's basically setting the student up to be self-reported. Yes. Any verification from Leo? Um, we haven't talked about, we're hoping their evidence is the verification. Um, you know, the way I look at it is that's, we should hear Leo's voice. That's the evidence. They're, the evidence they're going to have to upload is the verification. Um, we haven't gotten to whether or not we want feedback from Leo. I'm sure we'll get it from that person. But, you know, previously there was a lack of accountability where a student just signed off on 30 hours. Have to verify that as well. Um, I think that by how they have to load their evidence will become clear in, in that verification. At the same time, we've made a checklist of all the things students need to do in order to be complete and proficient in this project. They can't sign off on themselves for that. Only an adult, Jason, myself, Jim, Mike can do that, or Jen. And so, as part of this. Um, portfolio, are they, is, is, are they still expected or hoping to have a co-op experience? Yes and no. Those are, even before last year, the co-op was yeah. part of the senior project. Okay, so but the co-op's part of their technical experience. Right. Now, so not every student gets to go on co-op because if I start as a senior, I may not have a year's worth of previous learning to go to co-op. Okay. What we do want is every student to do at least one to three job shadows in their field. So again, the mentor piece didn't work, but now we're replacing that with required job shadows. Some of that may be done here without having to have the student leave. So tomorrow, um, we have VTrans coming in to speak to some of the programs. Students can document, videotape, ask a question, get some reflection, learn about that experience, upload all that to Protean, we may count one of those as a job shadow, as a, not as a job shadow, but as an interview, excuse me, for that piece. So you can see in, in the project, there's all sorts of requirements that they have to do in order to be following or creating their path, their roadmap mm -hmm. to, the, to next year, whatever that is. We're excited, um, I think, our hope is it's gonna lead to higher outcomes. I don't know better. I guess, I guess the, the question yeah. about my verification really was, what is the standard for an acceptable interview, if you yeah. will, yeah. as opposed to saying, whoops, I just checked that box because I had an interview. 
what, what is the standard for saying it was an acceptable or an excellent you know, uh, uh, interview? Sure. Um, I think we're going to have to build that as we're applying that one. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll go through an acceptable, as we teach them when we have guests in here, what is acceptable behavior and responses to those questions, we did the same process. What's, how do I interview these people? Mm -hmm. And what questions do I want to know? Based upon where, are, why am I even interviewing you in the first place? Right, so I think we'll build that as we go. There's some rubrics in there that we put in for scoring. Um, and I think we'll know that as we see evidence of student work on that interview, we'll, we'll know, you know, Paul, I'm really sorry that two minute video you showed of the interview isn't what we're looking for. Here's some feedback. You're gonna need to go either back to that person or do another one, and this is what we want next time. Mm -hmm. Much like a first draft of the senior's final paper project, right? They do a research paper, they submit it, um, uh, here, many are returned for more feedback. Very few are given proficient on the first bill. Mm -hmm. I would say it's the same thing. So, and then the third piece of this is that we're starting a PTO. I don't know what we're going to call it yet, um, but next Tuesday, the 25th, um, we've invited parents. It's been sent out in all the summer letters to parents the emails on the school messenger. Um, we're trying to get parents to be more involved in our career center. Um, and either as visitors here at the board meetings to help with food for thought, but the real outcome is to give them information about outcomes for students after high school. Um, so like today I got an email from the Agency of Education about the new National Guard bill where students can go through to the National Guard. It's basically a free college tour. Do parents know that? So new laws of July 1st. I didn't have all that information. Now we have better information to pass that along. But if we just mail it home, I don't feel like, I feel like it just stops at the door. And if I just email it, I'm only reaching 112 people, adults, and some of them work here, so it stops at the computer. So how do we get parents more involved in deciding the best possible outcome for their students? So that's our another one. Are you optimistic about? Am I optimistic? Um, so I've asked. I started sending letters out in April, May, and I got like Lisa Jacobs and uh, Ethan um, Newton, Newton's mom, um, Phil and, and Jane, or Phil and Jane, and I got two responses. Um, but then when we did our new student orientation night, we got at least another twenty. Oh, um, that's pretty good. So I'm hoping, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I hope that, I mean, it sounds like a great idea. Right. And I, and I think I was clear that it's not their role to judge curriculum. They're not a school board. Um, but we want, we want to know what's going on. What's missing from the Williamstown North Shore perspective? And how can we get students to have better outcomes? I think there are all these wonderful things that we do. We fill all these board spaces up, but how do parents see that and know that and then have that conversation with their own student um, to get to those places? So we'll try. I booked 10 months worth of time, so I'm, I'm available. But I think that's all I have. I, I had a question which yeah. I don't see here, and I... And okay. I but I saw it on the online report that you put in, and it was the sort of rapid decline of um, needs-based families. It was down to 21% or something like that, which was free and reduced lunch, which seemed really low to me, because I know the high school is more like 55. Is that, was that an accurate number? Um, I don't want to speak to a number because I probably don't have it in front of me. Yeah. And that's, the best I, thing I can do is get our current number for you. Yeah. No, it was just, yeah. I, I was looking, it was that, it also had a great, a big de decrease in kids on IEPs. And I was that, surprised about that too. That has gone down. Um, and it's, it's different by program. Um, we can identify certain yeah. programs having a higher yeah. IEP rate, um, but free and reduced were usually anywhere between 30 and 42 percent, and yeah. you know, I think the trend right now is not necessarily to 
have students not be on an IEP, but from an IEP, move them by the end of their senior year from an IEP to a 504. Um, and last year we had at least three or four students over the course of the year have that transition. Uh, but I can, I can get that number. Yeah, no, I, it was just a, a point of curiosity, nothing more. I was surprised. But, you know, what's interesting is that families or students may refuse to do the free and reduced lunch forms um, because most of our students want that food. You know, I point to the boxes, but they want the food to go home. Very few, I mean, I think it's the number last year was like on average 88% of the students took it home with them. So it's, it's interesting that at some point the form becomes in the way of access. Programs and enrollment is next. Okay. Do you want to give us a little update? Yeah, where are we at? So we're at 152 students. Um, where's our enrollment? Advanced manufacturing, we lost one recently. Um, so we're down to seven, but auto's still there and business. Um, construction, criminal. We lost one in criminal justice, so we're down to 15 there. Um, and when we actually gained one, we're up one in business. We, we gained a late start. Couple weeks ago, but other than that, we're we're right there. Um, we lost one student to a discipline issue. Um, so again, I, I feel good about our numbers. How's the advanced manufacturing class going? It's going okay. I think the the biggest drawback right now is so we have, and, and I thought you might want to take a peek and just at some point, but we have these two nice Bridgeport machines and a nice. Um, grinder, but we, the electricity isn't hooked up yet, and so the facility side of it is we need to catch up to. We're just waiting for some electrical issues. Um, but Are kids enjoying the class? I think they're enjoying the class, but they really would like those machines to, in what they picture advanced manufacturing is, is to start working on those machines. They picture doing. Mm -hmm. um, but next week is a big advanced manufacturing expo in, in Essex and Burlington, I believe, that we're trying to get up to. And then October 5th is manufacturing day in the state. So we've, invited to, we've been invited to a couple different plants to go visit or facilities. Um, and we'll take advantage of that. I'm encouraged that you know we lost one due to more of a personal life issue, not a educational issue. Um, Okay, that's gonna happen. Uh, it'll be nice this year when we recruit that we'll actually have a classroom set up for that, um, as students can actually participate and go through. And that was one other question I was gonna ask. So, what do you um, so, sort of for what 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 reason do you attribute for your better enrollment? Was it better recruitment or different? type of recruitment, or do you think it's just an anomaly? Um, I was asked that today at our Vermont Tech Directors meeting, and, I, and my the real answer was our guidance counselor. Um, we have, she's in her second year, she's fabulous. She brings all the teachers together, and I think her energy mixed with the teachers created a great recruiting environment. She, they are fabulous, we have a great team. You know, and so this is my fourth year, Three fourths of the staff are in their second, third, fourth year. We all started together. Um, you know, yesterday we had uh, early release day, right? And so we were having our staff meeting wasn't going to start till twelve forty-five. We got done at eleven thirty, and so I wanted to give them time for lunch. But maybe two people went back to their classroom to eat by themselves or to do work. Everyone else was in here as a group. And, and I was just surprised because I was like, the meeting's not starting for 45 more minutes. And they were like, yeah, we know. And, and they were here together working and eating. And I think I attribute that to the culture we have and that students want to be here. Um, 
And we try hard. We work hard at it. Um, so we, today we met. We're going to do our Vermont Works for Women. Um, we host our own challenge day for non-traditional programs to have females come into those programs. Um, this year we have nine programs participating, which is fabulous. And, and we're working with Vermont Works for Women again to make that happen. So this summer we hosted a Vermont Works for Women uh, welding camp for a week in, in the Ag program. So we'll do those things. Um, you know, and if, and if anything, we're short on space. Um, we would love some more space to do a pre tech program. That's coming down from, what is it, Act? Well, it's H919, I think it is. And the state really wants technical centers to be in middle school starting in sixth grade for career exploratory and we don't we don't have space for that how, how do we how do we either get them here or how do we get to Williamstown and Northfield to do that it's easier to do with Randolph but how do we it's a transportation issue and how do we run a pre-tech program without adding here and, and does Williamstown or Northfield really want us there to do that that's a potential because now what, what we've done or what we plan on doing, if we've got big goals, mm -hmm. you know, over down up the road, um, you know, to really open up opportunities for students. So like I can imagine us saying the same thing very soon in both schools. Well, that one space we had, we're now using it for, you know, this inter-district right. transplant stuff, so. Mommy? And I, I think it, the next question to that is what, you know, we, we identified that advanced manufacturing in this region is needed. And we're hoping those students, as they graduate, matriculate into the workforce in this region. But in the Vermont Talent Pipeline last year, worked very hard to work with all the construction and building trades programs throughout the state. And so now it's a set curriculum. They're hoping that will pay off for more employed workers for their system. But yet the healthcare system still wants more people as well. And, that, and it was a strange number. It was like, um, the, there aren't even enough graduates for the numbers that they need in the healthcare system to, to employ in the state. The number, the sheer number they need is not even in the state. So we could add a med tech program or a diagnostic program and probably fill it with 15, 14 students because we have a waiting list for health careers. But it's, it may not answer that region's needs or Gifford or Central Vermont Medical Center or anything else. But if we had space, we probably would. So still That's you here, the, the director's report okay. covered pretty thoroughly, but so. is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, our, our math teacher is working out really well. We're super psyched about that. Um, she's teaching three different math classes, and she's available for Acuclacer and SAT and PSAT help. And, and she's been in programs already working with her teachers on supporting <coughs> them and teaching math. Uh, so we're excited. else have questions for Jason? So the superintendent's report is enclosed. He is not able to make the meeting tonight. Um, and he would generally talk about the financial reports as well. Um, is there anything you think we ought to note on your on the financial report? Um, um, so Perkins was finally approved a week or two ago. Um, so you approved it as a board. We sent our application in. Um, but then the state finally said okay um, a few weeks ago. Um, so that's good. I think our line items are in order. I don't hear anything negative from Robin, so I feel good about the fact that if I don't hear anything negative from our business manager, we're okay. Um, we follow our process and our procedure. And the next grant to come out would be um, the state equipment grant, which should be available by October 8th. Um, and we should be able to spend around $24,000 um, for equipment. And we have, last year, you approved the innovation grant for the advanced right. manufacturing, right. and we have roughly 11500 left in there. Which will 
have all the equipment you need? Are we still um, we're going to buy one sale? more piece for that. Mm -hmm. But if I, if I keep pressing Kevin, I'm going to uh, tire him out. <laughs> so I have till May to spend that. So I'll spend that. So. But I think our other line items are in, in place. I am home. Yeah. So next on the Mom. agenda is the consent agenda, the only under there is to approve the minutes of our last meeting and most of us were there so um, if you've had time to look it over I would you need to, to approve this so I need a motion and a second to approve the um, the minutes as written I'll make the motion to approve I'll the second minutes. it all right all <laughs> those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed um, we have no correspondence and other items, I don't think, unless um, you have something. No? There's no executive session needed. Anything we should know for the next meeting besides the date? Uh, I would just say if there's any, you know, information you want that you don't think we're providing, please let us know. Happy to, happy to provide. I would say by the February meeting, I would have a better example of student work to show you. I'm not sure November would be good, but the, the next one, definitely February. And so then the, you'll still use that May date open house yep. for the? For the final, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Anything else from any of you? Any questions or, all right. We can adjourn then at 6.38.